Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce. Today I'm going to be talking about my add-on AP Octane. In order for AP Octane to work, of course, you have to have Octane for Blender. So if you don't have this installed, make sure to go watch my other videos that show you how to do it. It's free, uh, and there's a lot of great things about it. Once you install Octane for Blender, um, you get this tab. In the three viewport, you get this Octane tab. I've put my add-on in this tab so that you can access your Octane camera imager and my add-on at the same time. I also have another add-on called AP Octane Bake, which is specifically for baking lighting to textures and then um, attaching those textures so that you can export it uh, using uh, Cycles or, or Eevee. But that's a whole other video, a whole other a different plugin. So, uh, but the cool thing is that it's on this same, in this all in the same tab. So, uh, so and you can rearrange these however you want. So. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in. So AP Octane is, is a basic set of tools that allow you to sort of get set up and a few other kind of nice to add features on the side. This is a, a work in progress. So if you have any suggestions, I'm definitely open to hearing them. And if it's something I can incorporate, I'll definitely um, look into adding it. So you can see my scene is completely empty. I have no meshes, no materials, no lights, no environments, nothing, okay? Um, now, this is especially useful if you're if you're just getting into Octane for Blender, but even if you have been using it, sometimes it's good to just make sure that these things are set up. Um, so the first button, all it does is switches to Octane. So if I hit Octane Render Engine, it switches to Octane for me. Um, even if I don't hit that first one, the second one will actually do it for me, um, but it's still nice to have it right here at the top. All right, basic setup. What basic setup does is when I click this, well, I'll just go, go ahead and show you. So what basic setup does is it, if you're not in Octane, it switches to Octane. It adds an object with a basic universal material and it adds three Octane friendly area lights. Um, so, and then also the other thing is it adds a camera. You have to have a camera in your scene for Octane to render anything. So sometimes people, We'll put a mesh in, they'll put lights in, and they can't figure out why isn't it, why can't I see anything? Well, you have to have a camera set up. So that's part of this uh, this basic setup. I can show you again, push A, delete. I deleted everything. I can push basic setup again, and it gives me uh, all these things. And I can come out of the camera view, and I can, I can look around here. Um, yeah, and, and I, I'm navigating like, a, like you do with a game engine with by holding right mouse and WASD. Uh, there's another add-on I made for that. Uh, so if you're wondering what am I doing, how am I navigating like that, uh, you can go check it out. It's called AP Navigation. All right, so this next button, what it does is it adds a, a, an Octane Daylight Environment. So if I click this, you can see it added uh, a nice environment here. So if we switch over to, the, this is the shader node down here. Um, if we switch to World, uh, let's see, and I know I've got uh, my keyboard showing, so let me, let me just bring this over here. Um, basically, this is what that no, this is what add day environment, what it does is it adds uh, a texture and octane environment, daylight environment, and then now that you have this in your scene, you can, you can modify this however you want, um, but it, it just adds a very, it's a very quick way to just sort of get something in the scene and make sure it's working correctly because that, that's some of the when you're first getting started I know for me that was one of the biggest things It's like well how do I just see something I just want to see something <laughs> so you're able to do that right off the bat now the next one is cam cam imager override and what that does is uh, so I'll go ahead and turn these off so you can see so when I click this button it's going to check these two boxes okay so cam imager override so see those two are now checked if you don't know what these are, uh, I guess go watch some of my other videos. I explain it a little bit, um, or you can research it. But basically, uh, the main reason you need to have these in, uh, checked on is if I go to render right now and these are off, the render might look different than what the viewport looks like. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. This is also, I mean, it's great to have for a lot of reasons because you can tweak the color and the exposure and everything very quickly in real time. Uh, and, and get some really cool effects. So, 
What Setup Color Space does is it fixes all your color management settings. It's highly recommended that you set these to this setting here. So if I click this, these settings were suggested by somebody on the Octane for Blender team. Okay, out of core on and off. Uh, but basically, if you see here, Octane out of core, it just, this, all this does is check this on or off. All right, the next settings are material tools. So in Cycles, you have, if you have a material that's set up with the principled BSDF, um, no matter what the settings are here, you should be able to convert this to a, an Octane material. So if you push this button, it will convert it to an Octane material. And now if we switch back over to Octane, uh, that, that material works now, see? So this button does the convert to Octane material. Open Octane DB opens the Octane database. So you have local and live. If you click on live, you can go through, um, these are online textures that I can just select and import into my scene by right clicking, push import. Now I get this uh, interesting uh, texture here. And then you can also save, uh, you can save some, so I'll click that again. And just bring this up. Um, so you can also save some to your local database. So you can save, say I really like this, ma this material or I have my own materials that I really like. I can save it here. To do that, you need to go to Edit, Preferences, um, go to Add-ons, and then look for Octane. And then under this Octane Render Engine, you can set a path for your local DB, um, your local database. And then once you've done that, um, you can, if you click this, you can push Save Material to Local Database. It'll bring up the menu, and this is where you can do that. I think you need to save it as local DB category. You can add a category here. Right click, add category. We'll call this wood. And then we're gonna put that there, and then we'll call this, uh, what is the name of this material? Basket. This is a basket. And then you can render a thumbnail if you want. And then push OK. And now if we go to here, we have this. And we can do import. And now we have that material. So it's you can see it's really helpful uh, to have those, those settings there. It's one thing I love about Octane is that you can save your materials pretty easily and reuse them. So it's just something I'm just now get getting used to. Um, but uh, I've been using the live DB, but I haven't really been using local DB, but I'm definitely going to be using it a lot now, especially now that I have it in this menu. <laughs> uh, so then render noise or render tools. D noise compositor, as you see in the, in the tool tips, this deletes the current compositor and adds a denoiser to the compositing tree. So if we go to compositing right now, there's nothing. Um, if we click this, then it sets up uh, render layers, denoise, and composite. It does a quick denoise for you. So you could do that on your own, of course, but uh, uh, but yeah, it just, it just saves you a little bit of time. Okay, adaptive sampling on, all that does is in your render tab, uh, there is a adaptive sampling. It's something that I basically always check on and it's off by default. So I just decided to put it in this, uh, in this tab as well. So when you click this, it automatically turns this on. And the last button is Render Frame and Background. If you're new to Octane for Blender, it is also helpful because in order to render, you have to switch out of rendered view in the viewport, then push F12, and sometimes it's confusing and you're like, wait, why isn't it rendering? Uh, so it simplifies that by making it all in one button. Rendering in the background saves a little memory, so it might render faster depending on your computer. It will lock up Blender though, and you can't see the progress of the render. So if you have a decent computer, you probably should just render with the normal method by pushing F12. All right, that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions and if you have any ideas on what I could do to improve this add-on or any features you'd like to see, leave me a comment below and I'll see if there's something I can do about it. All right, take care.